Hi there, welcome to By Design Brain Boost with Alex. Uh, today we're going to continue with uh, part two of a three part short series on the difference between calendar control versus process control. So, as just a quick refresher um, and a reminder from last week, we talked about really the overall high level differences between calendar control and process control. So, calendar control is really locking your period. Um, uh, your subledger, absolutely, and then potentially blocking all entries through it. Whereas process control is really about targeting specific subledgers, but it does not affect your ability whether or not you can uh, process journal vouchers or journal entries in the system. So the difference between the two, calendar control is something that you manually trigger, doesn't specify a subledger, as I mentioned before, and it's probably the simplest way to manage because it's sort of an absolute method. You're kind of saying the period is closed or the period is open. Process control um, can have some automation. It can target a single subledger, uh, or it can target all the subledgers, and it can be customized to some degree, uh, or configured rather, to give you a bit more complexity. So with that, let's go in and have a look at how it works in the system. Today, we're going to really unpack the um, the calendar control. So, uh, and then in part three, we'll look at process control. So for today's session, just we showed you this in the previous one really quickly, but you go into open and close periods, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. And what we focused on was having a period that was open or closed. I think I mentioned that if you have a lot of companies and a lot of set of books, this can be a very long list. It's also got the dimension of time. So you could have hundreds of records. So make sure you're using your filter, which is uh, your search filter up here, and target the specific company you want to focus on. You could target the set of books, but typically you're going to open and close multiple sets of books simultaneously. That's what you'll want to do. And once you've targeted that, now you can look at the period. And so once again, a lot of records, even though we're looking at one company. So now I like to get into the filters at the headers. I'm going to type in that I want to just target 2021. I want to look at period 12. And I can see that I've got two periods here. So both of them are not blocked. And as we mentioned last time, if you want to close them, you can use the close button that changes the status to blocked or the open button changes it to unblocked. However, it's a bit more complex than that. So closed means it is blocked. There's no entries that can go in. However, open has some caveats. So when it's open, we're saying that it has to come the actual type of journal entry that's happening is going to have a flag on it which indicates the step and the step can be one of these seven steps it can be an opening balance all the way through to a profit and loss entry so and you can see that these are numbered so sort of think of this as high low so you could have your period set for a specific uh, step or for a range of steps in between the uh the first and the last that you're going to want to do and i should mention that opening balance and these adjusting closing balances, you typically won't use those throughout the year. Those are really for rolling your retained earnings and setting up your books in the beginning. So most of what you're gonna be doing when you're just running like normal is you're gonna be doing an operational posting. And in fact, you may decide that every single transaction that goes through your system is an operational posting, or you could block operational postings and start training people to flag different entries to have a different kind of a step on it. So why would you do that? It's because all of the subledgers are always operational postings. There's no way that you can change that. So if you're creating an AP invoice or an AR invoice, it's always going to be an operational posting. So when we look at this, this step here, if we say we're looking at operational postings through operational postings, then it's going to stay, say anything with this flag can be posted in the system. If we increase this and say all the way up to closing entries, then we're saying three different types of steps can go through the system. And then if we were to take it one further and say, now we're going to only target closing entry to closing entry. Once again, you do it on both sets of books. Now we would be saying that only entries that are closing entries may go through the system. So in the prior video, we showed you how to create a journal entry. We created an AP invoice. And we had it just set to unblocked and we had this wide open and those would have been operational postings. So for this video, let's look a little bit at the closing entries. So if I go to closing entry and closing entry and I hit save, 
Now, what I've effectively done is I'm preventing the system from, let's say, somebody entering an AP invoice or an AR invoice. Now, I mentioned that process control targets subledgers. This is not targeting a specific subledger. It's really targeting all the subledgers. So anything that is not a journal entry through the system or that is not a special job that you're running, like depreciation, will have a flag of operational posting and therefore would be blocked from the system. So we're going to save and close this. We're going to go down again into our general ledger. Let's open up a journal entry. And I prepped a journal voucher here. If we just go in and have a look at this voucher, we can see that by default, it's flagged as an operational posting. However, this field can be changed. So we could use one of these uh, other flags on it. Now, if I try and simulate this entry, you can see that this says period 12 is closed step for operational posting. This would be the same error message that a user would get if they tried to post a AP invoice, for example, into December of 2021. So if your process to say, I want to prevent all my subledgers from posting and I only want operational postings to happen through financials, through accountants at the end of the month, then it's more of a business process training issues because now you have to set up the periods the way we did. You're saying, I'm only going to allow closing entries. And then you train your accountants to use one of these other postings. And you'll see that there's multiple options here. I'll talk about that in a moment. Let's just say we're going to call this a closing entry. And now if we use the simulate button, you can see the system is prepared to post this entry. And in fact, if I go back and I hit post, it's going to post. How does that entry behave? exactly like it would if it was an operational posting. It's going to still debit and credit. It's going to behave in all the exact same ways. Just got this other flag on it. That flag is allowing it to go through this sort of partially closed period. So that's a journal voucher. Once again, that's a training issue. It is the exact same thing for all of the jobs that you have to run to the system. So things like, you know, uh, production orders, um, retained earnings, um, you know, depreciation, any one of those jobs, revenue reconciliation. So if I want to go and do, let us let let us actually run one of these jobs or look at one of these jobs. If we want to run some sort of revenue recognition, I have that same ability to manually override the step. So when I go in here and I set up the job, you can see that I have access to the steps. And by default, it's suggesting that maybe you should use closing entry. So if you're period is set up to only allow our operational postings, this will not post. You would either have to change this to an operational posting or you would have to increase the range on your period close steps to allow for closing entries. The choice is yours and it's really up to you. Now, why would you want to use these different types of flags? Well, there, there is the ability to actually run some financial information and see that. So that could potentially be useful to you. So as an example, if we were to go into a financial report, let's have a look at um, maybe just an income statement. And I'm just gonna grab a pre-configured income statement here, something like this. And what you can see is I can actually go in here and I can add the closing step just as a reference field. So you can see most of these things have gone through as operational postings. Some things have gone through as closing entries. So it divides it for you. So that could potentially be useful if you have a business process where you're looking for some sort of a manual way to isolate certain types of journal entries and get them to show up differently on your financial statements. So one example of that that could be useful is for something like partial ownership. So at the end of the month, if you're doing some sort of partial ownership entries and you want to break out those entries only sort of from a financial reporting perspective, another one would be elimination entries. So you may want to flag all your elimination entries so that you can then run your financials and say, okay, I want to run my income statement with eliminations in and I want to run a version with eliminations out. So that, that would give you the ability to do it. So it's a matter of using those closing steps. So what you might be wondering is none of these closing steps actually say elimination entries and other people might bump into them. So I will show you one other little trick here. 
we go into our business configuration, and this is something that only a system administrator could do, so you would definitely want to do this um, with some planning and thoughtfulness. We'll go in here and we're going to just search for a specific configuration activity called closing. And when we open up our closing steps, you can see that you do have the ability. In fact, there's lots of available numbers here. So you could create other types of closing steps. So you could create, for example, a closing step, maybe numbered uh, 025 called elimination entries. Then you could lock down your period completely at the end of the month after all of your month end activities are done, set the period so that it only allows the closing step called elimination entries, book those entries, and then finally block the period. So that's just one conceptual way that you could use closing steps and maybe a more advanced way that you haven't thought about using it before. So thank you very much for your time. Hope that this helps. Thank you.